Welcome Peter Steele. Peter Steele. Does that, that strikes you as rather strange. I mean, are you up there playing, women are dancing, going crazy, throwing themselves at you, trying to meet you backstage? What do you think of these women? Well, it's odd to me because this is my job. I'm not here to have a good time. I'm here to pay my phone bill. And, you know, <laughs> and, you know pay the rent. If they want to throw themselves at me, well, that's, that's their and business. And do you take them up on it? Do you sleep with some of them? Uh, have sex with some I'm going to have to take the Fifth Amendment on that. <laughs> If it doesn't upset people, it's yeah. not rock music. It right, has to upset right. the church, it has to upset your parents, right. has to upset the school system. Okay. So I chose Rammstein from Germany because... Oh, yeah. Rammstein! So because, because they upset both left-wing people and right-wing people. Rammstein. And they set themselves on fire. <laughs> not just a sonic thing but it's a visual thing as as well and you know being that this is what I do to make money I think it's it's important to at least attempt to look good on stage I mean I think there's nothing worse than seeing like four or five out of shape guys up on straight you know stage and trying to be sexy and hot and you know their, their guts are hanging over and their tits are all flabby and stuff so I try to do something about my appearance because it needs a lot of work Speaking of heaven, I actually wrote this song, Halloween in Heaven, for uh, Dimebag Daryl. And so that, that song is about all dead rock stars. And um, I didn't want to mention his name because I didn't want it to appear that Typo Negative or Peter was exploiting Daryl. Because he, he was a very close friend with the band and he was actually one of Kenny's best friends. And, uh, you know, like when, when you don't see somebody for months at a time, it, it's hard to believe that you're never going to see them again. Lay into me right now at 9 o'clock in the morning. Go ahead. All right. No, I'm not laying into you. I'm, I, I want to ask questions. On the, on the first album, okay. all right, your, you, this was, the whole first album was about your desire to kill your girlfriend and then kill yourself. You have always had fantasies of killing yourself and killing your girlfriend. Is that true? More or less. More or less. <laughs> at least you're honest you're about it. You're willing to admit that. Yeah, I like your honesty. And you say Kurt Cobain is your hero because he had the balls to shoot himself. That's, that's correct. That is correct. Yeah. Is this a depressed guy or what? Are you more depressed than me? I think I'm repressed. No, you're a little depressed, right? Sometimes. Have you gone to a psychiatrist for this problem? Yeah, but he told me I was crazy. He told me to get out. I feel that uh, the average person, normal people, work for a living. They don't you know, live off the government's back. They don't live off anybody's back. They have pride. They stand on their own two feet. If a person chooses not to work, that's fine. But don't go in and, you know, collect benefits because you're too lazy to get up out of bed. I have to w wake up for work at 4.30 a.m. in the morning, get my ass out of bed into the freezing cold because I have pride. And yet I pay taxes so some slob can sit in bed watching cartoons. Across the bar, the Burning in her mind, ready to eat her thighs. 